Yeah, Jesus said, sell all your possessions and follow me. Intermediate step. That's nothing. <laughs> if any of you have ever contemplated selling all your possessions and following Christ, and fear came up, you're afraid of the intermediate step. That's nothing. I'll tell you. There are those that I've worked with who, who actually took that step and thought the angels were going to come down from the heaven and the skies were going to open up. Okay, I've turned over my last CD. My last certificate of deposit. That was it. All I have is the clothes on my back and I gave over my last certificate. Where's the angels? Where's the chorus of angels? Listen. You've got to give up the concept of possession in your mind. If you have a possessive thought about the body, about a relationship, about anything in this world, you've got an attachment that's in the mind. And I always tell the story of Tolstoy, you know, because Tolstoy, you know, was very influenced by the, the deeper teachings in life and um, Gandhi was, you know, Gandhi, Tolstoy, there's a lot of characters throughout history that were very connected in different ways through this non-possession idea. And Tolstoy tried to give up all his possessions. He felt so much guilt there in Russia about the peasants that were cold and starving and hungry. And he felt guilty about having more than the peasants had, so he just thought he would give away all his possessions and live in eternal bliss. And... As the story goes, he gave away all his possessions, and he felt miserable, <coughs> still. <coughs> because why? You still have the belief in possessions. You're not really asked to give up something real, you're asked to give it over to the Holy Spirit to show you the unreality, that you never truly had it in the first place. Spirit doesn't own, spirit doesn't possess, spirit doesn't have things. There is no things in heaven. So when you become addicted to this world, and you become addicted to the possessive belief, even the idea that you can possess a body, or possess skills and abilities, or possess, I call it AI, artificial intelligence, which is what all the learning of the world is. It's all AI. It's all artificial intelligence. There's not a lick of intelligence in any philosophy, in any book, in any teaching, this world was overlearned, and, and the whole learning was to guard against true wisdom, which would be capital I intelligence, the intelligence of God. So, you know, you're not asked to give up something real. The whole point of the miracle, the whole point of atonement, is to be convinced that you have to give up nothing to experience everything. Is that, is that too big of a trade? As long as you believe in duality, that's what you're facing. You're going to have to give up nothing to experience everything. You see what Jesus is offering. Is this the offer? It's not like 1995, call now. No, this is, this is a one moment deal. It can only be accepted in this now moment. It's not offer no longer valid in the future. Uh, one time <laughs> offer. This is a one-time offer, and the offer is for give up nothing and accept everything. And if you've got any resistance coming up against this offer, then good, look at it. Just look closely. What do I believe this world really offers? You think Jesus is playing in Lesson 128, the world I see holds nothing that I want? Do you think he's just, it's a mere play of ideas? Where he's just throwing around the trinkets of ideas. The world I see holds nothing that I want. Well, that's a great lesson, because then you get to really look at whatever comes up there. It could be anything. It could be a blade of grass. It would be the same thing. A Rolls Royce and a blade of grass are, are the same. Really. A pebble. You ever see the movie with uh, Steve Martin called The Jerk? There's the one scene where he's kind of crying, he's kind of sad, he's walking through this room, and he's, uh, he's crying, I don't need anything, and I don't need anything, and I don't want anything, and I, I'm fine, and I don't need anything, except 
and he picks up <laughs> something in the room. The remote. And and that's all. And that's all I need. And, and I don't I don't need it. I don't need anything else except. And then he starts to make his way through the room. In this movie, The Jerk. And by the time he gets to the other room, he's still saying, and I don't need anything. And he's burdened. He's burdened. <laughs> Because he's, he's collected so many things just walking through the room, <laughs> saying, I don't need anything. And it's like very similar to like, I've heard stories in India where there'll be some guy who's been meditating for like 40 years and he's down now. All he's got is a little G-string that he wears and a mat. And he gets up to go take a piss and he comes back and the mat's gone. He is angry. He is good and angry. All he has is the G string and the mat. And the mat's gone. He's like, who did that? Because why? Because he really hadn't given up anything. Because why? He still had the belief in possession in mind. That's why renunciation can be a big show, you know, you can almost get egoically proud. He was egoically proud of the G-string and the mat. Like, I am more enlightened than anyone else because look, they have all these attachments and I'm only attached to the G-string and the mat. And the spirit's like laughing going, all it takes is the belief. All it takes is the belief in the mind. So that's what we're calling to. And that's why when we say, I mean, a lot of times we deal with people who are working in the world and it's like, well, it'd be good to question what you're doing that for. What, what addiction to linear time are you feeding by the idea that you have to work in a reciprocal way to get pay and benefits and so forth? And then they'll say, well, yeah, I, I, I went through that phase of my life. I, I tried to get a lot of things, but I... I got them, and I lost them, and I got them again, and I lost them, and I got them again, and I lost them, and now I don't have many possessions left, but I have a debt. Well, a debt is an interesting idea. Do you think that is a, is a present idea? Uh, having a debt to pay? And they'll say, I have to pay off a debt. Then we have people who come and I say, oh, I've got assets, these are my, uh, these are my assets, and this is my net worth and everything. It's the same as having a debt. If you believe you have assets, it's the identical same thing to believing you have debt. Because you can only have assets in linear time. And you can only have debt in linear time. And as I was saying in that movie, The End of Time, I was talking about all these things, even killing bodies and healing bodies are the same because they have linear time ideas. Are you open to hear it? Assets and debt are actually the same. It's not better to have assets than debt. You're equally stuck in your ego's timeline. You're like stuck in time if you believe you have either. And the answer is always, you can give it up to the Holy Spirit. Give your debt up to the Holy Spirit and say, I give it to you, be you in charge. Let's have some fun now. Or you can do that with your assets. You can give them all up to the Holy Spirit and say, be you in charge. Let's have some fun now. And it's the same thing. For years I've had people telling me about, my financial advisors are telling me, are telling me, are telling me. Years ago I worked with a woman at the Peace House and she was like, going through this thing with financial advisors and the stock market and everything and, and coming in and, and really not seeing that the torment that she was going through about with the financial advisor and the stock market and the ups and downs and everything was the same torment of the belief that you have debts to pay, bills to pay, and trying to figure out how you're going to pay the bills. It's the same error. You're thinking about linear time. And if somebody tells you it's better to be dealing with the world with lots of money in the bank than dealing with the world with no money in the bank and a big debt, don't believe it. They're lying to you. 
Anybody who thinks they have assets here and they haven't given them over to the Holy Spirit, I know you're struggling. You don't have to put on a happy face with me. I can see inside your soul. I've got x-ray vision. And I see what you're thinking about. You're thinking about those assets more than me. Eternity says, you're thinking about assets more than me and you may be think you're gliding down the highway, but in fact you're slip sliding away. You are not succeeding. Don't, if the people come and tell you, oh you've done well, you've done well. No you haven't. I know, I know better. If you're holding assets, you're holding debt. It's the same thought system. It's the same thought system. Why is it people are so eager to give up debt and so reluctant to give up assets? Hmm, that's a good question. If they're both the same, why is it that people are so reluctant to give up assets and so eager to give up debt? Pay my debt. Stay away from my assets. <laughs> It's the time, it's the trick of time. Desire for safety. Desire for safety. Desire for safety. Desire for safety of the body. Desire for safety in form. The belief that money buys protection. What? What did Jesus say 2,000 years ago? Easier for the camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Some of you have read Jesus' psychotherapy pamphlet. Read that one? It's a really good read. He's got a real short sentence in there. Money is nothing. Period. No comma. No, money is nothing. But, no. Money is nothing. Wouldn't it be fun to have the experience of money as nothing? Wouldn't it be fun to see that money is as neutral as everything else, like a pebble or a piece of dust flying through the air? It doesn't determine anything. It doesn't bring you anything. If you believe it does, you're in hell. And when you start to see its nothingness, then, then, you're surrendered to the Holy Spirit. You say, I give you everything, Holy Spirit. In the parable of David, that's what launched me on my journey. It wasn't the course, it wasn't course groups. It was actually that moment in the middle of the early course groups when I, I saw, I had a surrender moment that I needed to give my future, my body, my mind, my life, my resources, any, my debts, my assets, everything, all up to the Holy Spirit and say, this holy instant I give to you, be you in charge. That's what's made it a glorious life, it's just been that moment of surrender. It wasn't the Course, it wasn't a book with words, it wasn't people, it wasn't even people from the past or inspirations or whatever, because in the end, it's all the Holy Spirit reaching your mind saying, give it over, hand it all over, and I will give you back the experience of joy, of happiness and love. Give it all over. That was the moment. That was the defining moment for me. That's that's the moment of, of total awareness of, of happiness and joy. And then you have to stay in it. You can't try to take it back. You can't say, oh, I, I, I was deluded. I was in a fog. <laughs> take it back by resources. Still got $5 in my wallet. It's mine. Mine. I'm going to go have a Sunday. <laughs> I, you know, it's, you can't, you can't do that. You can't, I mean, you can't experience the fullness of who you are if you believe you can take it back. You have to give it over and, and let everything be given to you moment by moment. That's what I mean by it's not a matter of time. I wasn't like a well-known Course in Miracles teacher or some kind of avatar. I didn't give, give it over and go, oh, you are now an avatar. Yeah. Because there's no, we've already discussed, there are no avatars. You can, you know, the Spirit's not going to tell you that. You know, you, you get nothing 
except the spiritual reward of, of knowing your true self by letting it go. So, you know, this is it. This is the invitation. This is the red pill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.